Today, I'm making every player that got traded a 99 overall. And the Washington Wizards are going to be stacked. They've been making a ton of moves this offseason. Of course, you have 99 overall Jordan Poole. Every Hall of Fame badge too, by the way. 99 overall Tyus Jones. And you might think, oh, a pair of 99 overalls? They'll be really good. But don't forget about Danilo Gallinari, who tore his ACL, recovered, and got traded. It's a cold world, man. Bundle up. But you thought the Wizards were done there? No, they have Landry Shamit, Mike Muscala, both also going up to a 99 overall. This roster is absolutely stacked. But a couple players who you might have forgotten about, Patrick Baldwin Jr. and Ryan Rollins, two young players from the Golden State Warriors, are also going to be going up to 99. So the Wizards have a total of 7 99 overalls. Now let's move on to the Golden State Warriors, who the Washington Wizards traded with. I think that the Wizards fleece the Golden State Warriors in the Chris Paul trade, but I guess we'll have to see. I think it was like a money thing for the Warriors. Now let's move on to the Phoenix Suns, who were able to add Bradley Beal, but also added Jordan Goodwin and Isaiah Todd. So now they're going to have 399 overalls alongside Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and DeAndre Ayton. This team looks really good, but I don't know if anybody is going to be able to compete with the Washington Wizards in the first year of this video. We'll simulate multiple seasons to see how things change with free agency and everything, because then other teams might be able to get into the mix, as the Wizards eventually will probably lose out on some of their guys. The next player we're upgrading is Rashawn Holmes for the Dallas Mavericks. The Mavericks had a sneaky good draft. They traded with the Oklahoma City Thunder, who ended up adding Davis Bertans to their roster. Davis is going to be going up to a 99 overall as well. And the Memphis Grizzlies, they end up adding Marcus Smart, the heart and soul of the Boston Celtics. It's a cold world, man. Can't believe they traded the heart and soul of the team. You just got to bundle up. It's a cold world. What can I say? Kristaps Porzingis is also going up to a 99. Y'all remember the three-team trade, all the drama that went on within it. We thought that the Clippers were going to be involved. That fell apart. Weird day. But, yeah, there's all the 99 overall players. Let's go ahead and let's check out the all-star teams. You got Marcus Smart, Ryan Rollins, Jordan Poole, Mike Muscala, Kristaps Porzingis, Davis Bertans, Rashawn Holmes. Pretty much all of our players made it, I'm sure. And checking out the Washington Wizards, they are 54-0, while the Phoenix Suns are 52-4. So it looks like the Wizards and the Suns are going to be competing for a championship this season. I don't know if anybody else can really hang with either one of those teams, as Bradley Beal caps off the Suns' successful season with an MVP. Jordan Poole, six man of the year. Isaiah Todd gets a DPOY, and Jordan Goodwin gets a most improved. And as you saw... The Washington Wizards went a ridiculous 82-0 on the season. A perfect year. And you do not see that happen like often at all. It's crazy that they were able to do that, especially in a league with other 99 overalls, in a league with a team like the Suns who were stacked up with talent. The Wizards were somehow able to do it. And you might be like, oh, they had 799 overalls, bro. The 82-0 just like hardly ever happens, so it's crazy to see that they were able to do that. Here's a look at some of the other top teams in the East, but none of them compare to the Wizards. Same thing out West. Nobody compares to the 76-6 Phoenix Suns, who have Devin Booker coming off their bench. The Grizzlies were really good, though. So were the Warriors, who have Steph Curry coming off the bench. Put Klay Thompson on the bench, man. No way you're putting Steph off the bench. Wardell coming off your bench? That is wild. But let's go ahead and let's get into the NBA playoffs. We're going to go ahead and simulate the first round pretty quickly. Let's be honest, we're kind of just waiting for the NBA Finals. The Wizards and Suns are really the only two teams that have a chance at the chip. I'm sorry to all the other teams. It's like when the Warriors and Cavs were just running the West and East. Y'all were really just warm-ups for the Finals at that point. So that's exactly what's going on. Sorry, Davis Bertans. I know, I know you've been trying your best, but it's just not going to be enough, I promise you. Der Super Team is back at it, man. Just building another one of these stacked squads. KD 
has a really good squad, and he is in the Western Conference Finals. The Warriors and Grizzlies have a Game 7, which is pretty exciting. If you know the storylines, the Warriors and Grizzlies beef and all that. So let's get into it. Game 7, season on the line for both of these teams. We're really just here to find out who's going to get beat by the Phoenix Suns, and it looks like it's going to be the Golden State Warriors, winning by 18 points. It, John Morant and Marcus Smart had solid games, but Steph Curry and CP3 were out there hooping. Chris Paul with 21 rebounds. Imagine getting dropped off in a Game 7, and it's because Chris Paul got 21 boards. That is wild. But now we've got the Suns and the Warriors in the finals, and if you look at these teams, you can tell the Suns are going to be no match. Or wait, other way around. The Warriors are going to be no match for the Suns. And then same thing with the Wizards and Celtics, bro. Y'all are cooked. The season is over. Might as well book your vacations. Jordan Goodwin leads the Suns to the finals. And Warriors legend Patrick Baldwin Jr. is here in the finals. We're going to see who can get this done. And yeah, I mean, I pretty much knew, man. The Wizards were just cooking this year. So let's get to free agency because that's where things can actually start to shake up. We can see teams start to improve. We can see teams like the Wizards and Suns start to get worse. We'll have to see how this free agency goes. Okay, it looks like the Wizards are just trying to add to their squad as they're going after Kristaps Porzingis. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the Wizards are just about to stack up their team even more. We'll have to see, though. Simulate a little bit of free agency. And, yeah, guys should have their teams picked by day eight. They have. Gallinari's going to the Bulls. KP's staying put. Jordan Goodwin is going to the Jazz. Tyus Jones to the Pacers. But Mike Muscala is going to go to the Wizards. So the Wizards lost Tyus Jones, but they end up picking up Mike Muscala. So another 99 overall on the squad in Washington. And yeah, their team's definitely still holding it down pretty strong. They look pretty good going into yet another season. And if we check out the All-Star teams, you see a lot of our guys' footprints being left, their marks being made on these All-Star squads. LeBron's still there as well. The old man still making the All-Star teams, even with all these 99 overalls trying to take over. And Patrick Baldwin Jr. has really been hooping. He won a Finals MVP last season, won a championship, and now he's the MVP of the league. Mr. Bad East Jordan Poole goes ahead and wins the sixth man of the year. Isaiah Todd is the DPOY. And Wes Unsell Jr. starting to fall off. Only 80 wins on the season for his Washington Wizards. I definitely expect more from that team. All right. Let's go ahead and get to the NBA playoffs. You all see the All-NBA teams, the All-Defensive teams, whoop de doop Let's go ahead and let's get into it. The Phoenix Suns and the Wizards were both running their respective conferences, as you would expect. They've got some really good squads. Checking out the stats, Royce O'Neal averaged two points per game, while Darius Garland averaged a measly 30.8. But we don't really see too many of our 99 overalls up here in terms of the scoring ranks. And that's because I left them with their own tendencies. If I gave them all super crazy tendencies, they would all just play the same because they'd have the same tendencies. So I wanted to make it a little more interesting by having them still play to their play styles while also being a high overall. And if we're being honest, I'm just too lazy to update the tendencies. Anyways, looking at some of these top teams in each conference, we see our 99 overalls making their mark on the league. But are the Phoenix Suns going to be able to hoop this year and get it done? And it looks like the Suns added Kawhi Leonard now. So that's crazy. They lost DeAndre Ayton, but they have Sangoon and Kawhi Leonard. So their squad's definitely looking wild. Don't really know how that happened. And the Golden State Warriors still have Steph and Chris Paul. The Thunder have Shea and Davis Bertans. All right. We're going to go pretty quickly through some of these early round matchups again. We're probably going to see another Suns versus Washington matchup. This is the new Cavs Warriors. The Warriors actually low-key gave the Suns a run for their money, but the Suns still got out of there in six. Now the Suns have the Memphis Grizzlies in the conference finals. This Grizzlies team is cool, but I don't think they're any match for Phoenix. And looking at the Celtics, the Celtics are usually a team that dominate in 2K, but I think they've met their match with the stacked Washington Wizards. Wow, the Grizzlies are up 3-0 to zero on the Suns, 
But the Suns are looking to make a comeback. Are they going to pull off the 3-0 to zero comeback? Let's simcast and see. The Suns get off to a good start early, but it's back and forth. The Grizzlies are definitely competing, but the Suns, it looks like they're going to get it done. They pull off the 3-0 to zero comeback. Bradley Beal leading the way for his Phoenix Suns. Kevin Durant, a strong game. Isaiah Todd, a triple-double. Kawhi Leonard getting some buckets. And Ja Morant tried his best. But it wasn't enough. The Suns are moving on to the NBA Finals to face up against the Washington Wizards. And the Suns are going to get it done. They just beat the 80-win Wizards. Okay, I just pressed simulate round because I thought, oh yeah, the Wizards are just going to win. They won 80 games on the season. But the Suns pull off a 3-0 comeback to make the Finals and then beat the Washington Wizards in the NBA Finals ridiculous stuff now let's go ahead and let's get into free agency we have quite a few 99 overalls here who are about to make their free agency decisions we'll see how this shakes up the league we'll see if the wizards end up losing any key players do they even have anybody in free agency this year braun can't even get a contract for a max or anything all these 99s are taking away his money and the Wizards are going to be able to bring back Ryan Rollins, so they don't even lose anybody. Davis Bertans heading to the Big Apple, CP3 back to the Clippers. Here are the all-star teams. We're kind of just seeing our 99 overalls take over at this point, just doing some crazy stuff, you know, hooping, playing basketball. And at the end of the year, Patrick Baldwin averages a triple-double en route to an MVP. And his teammate Jordan Poole goes ahead and gets another six-man of the year. Also, Isaiah Todd has been stacking up those DPOYs. This time, he's with the Lakers. Wes Unseld is the coach of the year. 78 wins on the season for him. You see Davis Bertans on the All-NBA team. There's Wemby as well. You got Rashawn Holmes on All-NBA. He's with the Houston Rockets. He makes all defense in addition to making All-NBA. But, of course, these guys are going to be good defenders. They have all the defensive badges and all that that they need to be successful. And looking at the standings, the Washington Wizards, man, they're, they're just way too good. They're far and away the best team in the Eastern Conference, and it makes sense why. They're stacked up with 99 overalls. They even have a 99 overall six man. What are other teams supposed to do? They got Paul George coming off the bench. He isn't even playing. He's just a cheerleader at this point, and he's playing for a minimum contract trying to get an NBA championship. It looks like the Wizards should be able to get their revenge tour this year because no team is really matching up with them in terms of record. It might be cooked. The Wizards might just go ahead and get an easy ring because nobody really has the talent to compete with them. Phoenix fell off after beating them in the finals last year. They're going to go ahead and lose in the first round. So whoever faces them in the finals, it's Isaiah Todd and the Lakers. Yeah, let's be honest. It's over. The Wizards are going to sweep. Patrick Baldwin Jr. wins the finals MVP. Time for free agency. Let's see if these guys from the Wizards can start to split up. I don't know how the Wizards are keeping the core together this well, but they're somehow managing to do it. It looks like they might lose Landry Shamit to the Knicks, who already have Davis Bertans, so we could see a little duo form over there. Maybe they can be the ones to take down the Wizards. We'll have to see how the rest of free agency ends up panning out, who ends up making big pickups, who ends up standing pat with their teams. And all the big names are off the board. Landry Shamit is going to go to Utah. Patrick Baldwin Jr. stays put in Washington. Steph Curry goes to the Raptors. So definitely some player movement. But nothing changes in terms of Patrick Baldwin getting his MVP. That's the Patrick Baldwin Jr. Award, man. He's just out there winning it season after season. I mean, when your team is winning 75-plus games, I think 78 wins is the lowest this team has had. When your team is winning that many games in a season, somebody on your squad has to be MVP. Actually, Bradley Beal did end up winning it that one year, but the Suns were also really good, so I guess that's why. The Wizards, of course, though, had another good season. It's nothing new. Regularly scheduled programming. Luka Doncic, though, he leads his Mavs to the one seed in the West with really not too much help. He doesn't have a 99 overall teammate or anything. And Patrick Baldwin Jr. leads his team to the finals. Game one to Washington. 
game two to Washington. Yeah, even with Luka, they can't make that Luka magic happen. It is over. And the Wizards, they only have 499 to this point, but that's just been enough to get the job done. They're putting up historical seasons, winning a ton of games. But in free agency, they could lose out on Mr. Baddies himself, Jordan Poole. He could be moving on to his next squad. And by the end of free agency, he hadn't really picked out a destination, which was kind of weird to me considering, you know, he's a 99 overall. And some other guys who were lower overalls had already signed with their teams. But we'll just go ahead and simulate to the end. And Jordan Poole did find a squad. He's going to be playing for the Sacramento Kings. So the Wizards have really started to break up. They've lost out on a lot of their players meaning that the league should be a little bit more wide open this season and other guys should have chances to win an NBA championship. Patrick Baldwin, oh my goodness, man, just year after year. This is like last video, all those MVPs Ben Simmons was getting. If y'all haven't seen that video, I'm going to put it in the end screen so you can check it out because some absolutely blasphemous stuff was going on in that video. You would have to just see it because it was wild. I'm just going to go ahead and plug my video. And you know what? While we're at it, if you're enjoying the video so far, might as well subscribe to the channel. And if you're not, you've just wasted quite a bit of your time because we're almost at the end of this video and you're still watching. So that that's tough, man. You might want to move on to the next video. The Washington Wizards, though, they really did fall off less than 70 wins on the season. The Pacers are in the mix. They've got Tyus Jones, Tyrese Halliburton, and Pacers legend Malcolm Brogdon makes a homecoming to try and compete for a championship. The Pistons picked up Marcus Smart, and they look pretty good. The Celtics still have JT, JB, and Kristaps, and KP. They all have like little two-letter, uh, what's it called, acronyms for their names, JT, JB, KP. That, that's fire. Bobby Portis, he's leading the Mavericks to a bunch of basketball wins. Here's the Sacramento Kings, Jordan Poole running the two guard, playing alongside Cole Anthony. Those guys will definitely take a lot of shots for you. AD and Isaiah Todd in the front court would be ridiculous defensively for the Lakers. Y'all see all those DPOYs Isaiah Todd has been getting. All right. We're going to go ahead and simulate through these early rounds pretty quickly. We do have a couple game sevens. And since the league is a little bit more competitive at this point, we might actually see what's going on with these teams and see how these series are going. Because now it really could be anybody's championship. It's not a foregone conclusion who's going to win this ring. So let's see who takes home this game seven between the Pistons and the Knicks. Early on, the Pistons cooked. I think they held them scoreless. The Knicks, I think the Pistons held the Knicks scoreless for like the first 20 points. And they're going to get the dub. The Knicks almost came back in this one, but they didn't. And Marcus Smart, a master class, leading his team to a win. And they're moving on to the second round. Then we have the Oklahoma City Thunder and the Sacramento Kings. Let's see who gets the job done here. Game 7. Again, winner go home. Both teams' seasons on the line. Legacies on the line in the virtual basketball video game. And it's a close one in the fourth quarter. But I made the mistake of sim casting too long. And the Thunder were able to take it away. I probably should have hopped in earlier. Jordan Poole with a triple-double. Bad shooting efficiency. But you know what? It's okay. Well, not really because he lost. But, you know, you know the stat pad. He got the triple-double. All right. Let's go ahead and simulate this second round. See if we get any game sevens. And it looks like we actually have two. One between the Pacers and the Pistons. The Pistons with 99 overall Marcus Smart. And the Pacers with 99 overall Tyus Jones. Let's see who takes home the battle of the point guards. And the Pacers were up early on, but the Pistons are fighting back. It's a back and forth game, but the Pacers are able to take it home. But I mean, the Pacers, they have the duo of Tyrese and Tyus. That, that's fire, man. And they're able to go ahead and get the dub. Now we've got the Lakers and the Mavericks here. Luka Doncic going up against defensive mastermind Isaiah Todd. Who's going to get the job done here? It's again a back and forth game. But the Mavericks, a huge third quarter is going to propel them to the W. They win by 19 points in this one. Luka Doncic with the triple-double. He didn't even need to shoot the ball that much to get the job done. Isaiah Todd with the triple-double as well. But... They're going to lose. And now the Mavericks are facing the San Antonio Spurs. The Spurs have Wemby and the Mavs have Luka. And then looking out east, you have the Pacers and the Wizards. 
The Wizards are still here, man. They don't want the dynasty to be over. Let's see if they can get it done and win a championship once again. Both series are tied up at one apiece. And they're just going to continue to go back and forth as both are tied up at 2-2 two to two as well. And ultimately, we don't get any Game 7s as the Mavericks and Wizards are going to advance. Is Luka going to be able to take down the Washington Wizards who have won all but one of the NBA championships in this video? We're going to have to see. Game number one goes to Washington. Game number two goes to Washington. Game three goes to Washington. And the Wizards are going to sweep the Wizards dynasty. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. Have a great day. Be sure to like and subscribe.